Hey neighbors, it's your buddy next door, Mason Stewart, and I'm so excited to be back doing this every single week. I'm so glad that you guys are happy to be here and to listen to your buddy next door. Now, I've had a lot of time over this last week because I was sick. I didn't get a chance to do a whole lot of voiceover work. Didn't get to do a lot of things. <clears throat> Excuse me, still got a little bit of phlegm uh, build up uh, from the COVID situation, you know. But really, I uh, had a lot of time to think about, like, what do I want to do as far as content-wise go? What do I want to do? And it got brought up, I can't remember who it was, <clears throat> but they were saying that I should go ahead and I should do what, what we were talking about, Hot Ones. If you don't know what Hot Ones is, it's a YouTube series where this guy interviews celebrities, music artists, uh actors, actresses, um, influencers, anybody of that kind of sort. And he interviews them while they're eating like progressively hotter and hotter hot wings. It's a fantastic show. I love watching it. It's a good time. I really love spicy food. And somebody is like, oh, you should really do the hot ones for one of your videos. So I think that's something that we're going to do in the future. But it got me thinking. Um, as we're going through voiceover and as I'm doing my, you know, little daily life updates, um, I was thinking, what could we do, um, as kind of just like a thing that will be kind of more encompassing with this content? And I thought to myself, food is a fantastic idea. Um, whether it's challenges like the Hot Ones challenge, um, that we're going to look to try to do, uh, maybe some other spicy challenges, Maybe it's just honest food reviews of maybe a new fast food item that's come out or a new drink or anything of that nature. Um, I love food. I love cooking. I love eating. All of that kind of stuff. So I think this will fit really well into the wheelhouse. So uh, we're going to try to start doing that going forward in the future. Um, right now, unfortunately, uh, my wife is working at convention for Young the Living. Um, and she has our only car. And since we live in the middle of nowhere, I can't really go anywhere and get anything. Uh, for this week. So this week, um, just prepare yourselves. That's going to be something coming down the line, something that I really want to do, um, along with kind of these short little weekly updates. Um, so yeah, just keep an eye out. We'll be doing some food reviews, food challenges, different stuff like that. Um, I think that's something everybody usually gets behind. So uh, make sure that you are subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure you're reading the blog where we'll have pictures. Um, and the podcast, where you'll be able to hear the podcast version of me doing these things. All right, <clears throat> let's jump into the weekly recap. Like I mentioned in my last video, um, I uh, was recovering from COVID this week, for the most part. Um, jumping back into doing the daily work as well, rather than daily going into Disneyland or just getting up and not doing anything really uh, super productive was a bit of a challenge, but I was grateful for it at the same time because it got me back onto a routine. I was able to feel like I was getting more accomplished in a day, and I was able to feel better about everything that I was doing. Um, one thing that became very apparent um, this last week was the neglect that our lawn had taken while we were out on vacation. Um... You look out the back door, and for whatever reason, I still haven't figured it out, but my backyard grass grows so much faster than my front yard grass. Anyways, everything was pretty overgrown, right? Um, I didn't ask my parents to, to mow it because I didn't think that it would cause too big of a deal. Well, <clears throat> this morning, wake up bright and early, and I'm like, hey, I need to nip this in the butt. We got to take care of this. So I do the front lawn. It's all good. We get it cut back to the normal normal height that we cut it to. This is great. I've got an electric mower, you know, saving the world. Helps with gas. Fantastic all the way around. Uh, so it's got a battery. So I get to the backyard, and it is so tall in the backyard. I wish I had taken some before and after pictures. I didn't, unfortunately. But I could not cut the grass at the level where we usually cut it because it was so tall so i thought to myself okay i'm gonna i'm gonna bump it up two notches right so it'll be two notches higher um and then i'll do another round after that well even with the two notches higher it was still having a hard time cutting through that grass that's how tall it was in the backyard 
And so eventually, you know, got through the first round, and then the battery died. And I'm like, oh, I don't have a backup battery. This is terrible. What are we going to do? I need to buy another battery. Uh, so I get my battery on the charger, start looking at, you know, um, other batteries and how much they're going to cost. I'll give it about 30 minutes, and I'm like, hey, 30 minutes should be enough time to get my relatively small backyard cut to where it needs to be. So I go ahead, I get going, everything's going well, we, we're on the second pass, everything's looking good, and all of a sudden, I see it flashing down there, beep, boop, 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 and boom, it dies. I've got like two little stretches left to mow, and so I kind of decided... <clears throat> that because we only have the one battery, it's not charging fully the way it needs to right now. Um, I'm just going to leave it as is for right now. But it really got me thinking. Um, in life, in general, um, we tend to ignore things we don't want to take care of right off the bat. That's just kind of like human nature, right? We, we tend to put off doing very important things that we need to do. Well... Um, a lot of times, like this grass in my backyard, it may cause issues further down the line when it would have been a really simple task to just mow it at that time, right? If I'm mowing every single week, it's going to be easy, and I'm going to get it done and get it done. But letting it build up and build up and build up means that there's going to be more for me to do. <clears throat> I experienced this in voiceover as well this past two weeks um, while I was on my vacation. I wasn't able to do any auditions, anything like that. I just don't have the setup necessary for it. And since everything was already paid for, um, I didn't feel good about, you know, just staying home and not doing all that stuff. So, um, as well as my marketing. My marketing definitely took a hit these last two weeks. Looking at my analytics, like to my website, to different things like that, definitely went down uh, because I wasn't interacting. I wasn't doing the things I needed to do to upkeep things and to keep it going the way it needs to go. So I just want to make sure that everybody take stock of your life. I'm not saying you have to have a daily plan or a weekly plan, whatever it may be. I've found that to be helpful um, just because there's so much going on in our lives, so much that we want to accomplish that writing it down helps you out, helps you find ways to make sure that that grass, right, that those tasks are cut down you're getting it taken care of. That's what's really important. Are we taking care of the things that we need to, right? And I think this has kind of been a theme of these podcasts, right? Good, better, and best. We can be doing good things. We could do be. We could do. We could be doing better things, and we could do be doing the best things. Um. So it's just a matter of what is important to us, and as we look and we find what's important to us, that's where we're going to find everything that we need in our lives. So today's going to be a little bit shorter of a video uh, just because, like I said, we're getting back into the groove. Uh, but my weekly updates, obviously, unless like something humongous happens, I'm not going to have a whole ton to talk about, but I want to be able to interact with each and every one of you. Um, so we're going to be doing, you know, your buddy next door food reviews. So write down in the comments, leave me a message, DM me on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, wherever it may be, hit me up on Twitch if I ever start streaming again, and maybe we can do some food reviews. Maybe you guys would like to see some tier lists of what foods I like. Um, I think we're going to be doing a lot more heavy focus on foods and different things like that, just kind of liven it up, make it a little bit more fun. In fact, you know what? I think that's a great idea. Let's start it right now. Welcome to the first tier list video uh, of your buddy next door. So we're going to go and we're going to go today over what I think about your classic fast food places. So um, we're going to go through, we're going to talk about them, we're going to see where I rank different things, and then you guys can leave down in the comments what you guys think about all of these different uh, places. Now there are some regional ones that aren't on here that I think I am going to have to, we'll pick one of these that I haven't had before, and we'll turn it into that. So let's go ahead and let's get started with Burger King. <clears throat> now, my family and lots of other people are already going to know this, but Burger King and Charbroil Burgers in general are not my favorite. 
Just not my not my cup of tea. I understand why people like them. I think they can be really good, but definitely not my favorite. So I'm going to put Burger King solidly in. Oh man. I think we got to give it C tier. Now nah, this may be decisive. People may be coming at me. I don't know. We're we're, we're gonna have to see. So, <clears throat> all right. McDonald's, classic. Now, you have to remember, we're not taking into account fries. We're not taking into account that McDonald's has the best soda. We're not doing any of that. This is purely based off of burgers, right? We're doing this based off of burgers. So if we're going off of burgers, um, we're also going to change this to never. Oh, my gosh. I cannot type never had. Here we go. Okay. McDonald's is getting an A tier. I don't know what it is about McDonald's burgers, but they are freaking delicious. You know that when you get a hankering for McDonald's, you you aren't wanting a burger, right? You don't go to McDonald's to get a nice burger. You go to McDonald's because you want McDonald's. It's like its own little thing. That's why I'm not giving it the S tier because it's not like the best of everything that we see here. But it is just so good. Like, it's McDonald's. You can't go wrong. Okay. Now, in and out in and out and this is going to be extremely controversial. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate. <clears throat> a lot of hate. In and out is the most overrated burger ever. The burger is not good, guys. Even animal style, it's like okay. In and out is the quintessential like childhood memory nostalgia burger right that's why people love it it's a nostalgia burger granted i will say their prices are fantastic so that is a very appealing reason but i think like it's just not good i, I don't know what else to say it's just not a good burger we're gonna move on because i don't know what else to say about it it's just not a good burger <clears throat> wendy's wendy's is fantastic I love Wendy's, Frosties, you know, burgers are okay. Burgers are a B. I've never been to Rally's. I've never been to Whataburger. I've never been to Fat Burger. Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box is always going to have a nice place in my heart. And I kind of put it as like my middle tier burger, kind of like a Wendy's, right? It's not my first choice, but if it's around, I'll definitely get it. Now, if there's a jack-in-a-box and a Wendy's around, which am I going to choose? That's really what you're looking at when you get to this kind of portion of everything. So, jack-in-the-box, I put it above Wendy's. Now, hear me out. The sourdough burgers at jack-in-the-box are so good. If you have not had a sourdough burger from jack-in-the-box, you need to get there, eat the burger. It's fantastic. Okay. Uh, Tommy's, I have no idea what that is. I've never had White Castle, so we'll get rid of that. Does Wiener Schnitzel make hamburgers? Do they make cheeseburgers? Do they make burgers? I don't know. All right, A and W. Now, there was an A and W when I lived up in Logan, and they had some of the best fries I've ever had. Now, this is not a fry ranking right now, unfortunately. We'll get to a fry ranking. I think it. I, I live too far away to, like, try all these different fries, but I think it would be a good time. We'll see if we can do that in the future. But a and burgers were meh. They are meh. I would put it above a Burger King, though. I would have it before Burger King. Now, this is where my take is going to kind of get twisted. I said with Burger King, I don't necessarily like the charbroil. It's not my favorite, but let me tell you something. If you want a charbroil fast food burger, there is nothing better than a Carl's Jr. burger. Let me tell you, Carl's Jr., the 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 Western Bacon Ranch with the onion rings, the barbecue sauce, mm, that is a fantastic burger. So good. All right, Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen, guys. Dairy Queen, high quality, they're going to get a B. Let's be real. They're not known for their food. They're known for their shakes. Just is what it is. Farmer boys, we don't know what that is. Who knows? 
Five Guys Burgers and Fries is the S tier. Now, people are going to come at me, and they're going to say, Wow, how do you have in and out that low and Five Guys that high? Let me tell you something. There is something so magical about a Five Guys burger. I can't explain it to you. It's so good. It is my favorite burger by far, bar none. Freddy's, I've never been to. We won't worry about it. Crystal, I've never been to. And I've also never been to Steak and Shake. So, I mean, there's a large portion that I've never had, uh, especially because I live in the West Coast. Uh, not even the West Coast, right? I live in the freaking mountains. I live in the middle of nowhere, Utah. All right, Smash Burger. Smash Burger is a good burger. Oh, man, I'm having a hard time. Because Smash Burger, is, it's like a little bit more expensive. It's kind of like on that Five Guys level. It's like if you want a fancier burger, that's kind of where you're going. But I like Five Guys way better than I like Smash Burger. And I think I would have McDonald's before I have a Smash Burger. Uh, okay, guys. I think I think we're going to stick Smash Burger at the top of B tier. Right at the top. Right at the top of B tier. That's where it's going to be. Okay, now Sonic cheeseburgers, Sonic burgers in general. Let me tell you, people sleep on Sonic. Sonic has some good burgers, man. You don't have to just go there for drinks or for, for their frozen treats. Let me tell you something, or their tater tots. Get the strawberry limeade, get a burger. You won't be very disappointed. You might be a little bit disappointed. I can't tell you. That's on you. You got to decide that. But Sonic is going to get... A B tier. And you know what? I am going to make an executive decision. Jack in the box is going A tier. Boom. There it is. There's your buddy next door's ranking for fast food burgers. We've got five guys in the S spot. we got McDonald's and Jack in the box in A. We've got Smash Burger, Sonic, Wendy's, Carl's Jr., and Dairy Queen in B. C tier. We've got A&W, Burger King, in and out And then I've never had any of those at the bottom. Okay. We've gotten that out of the way. Now we've got some regional ones that I need to throw up there. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna pick a pick a thing here, and we're go. We'll just talk about it because that's I don't have the icons. I don't have time to go and find the icons because this was a spur of the moment decision. But we're going with it because it's fantastic. All right. So there are three burger places that are very regional to the Utah area that are that are pretty cold classics, I guess I would say, is the best way to put it. First and foremost is Arctic Circle, the progenitor of the best fry sauce, the condiment that came out of Utah, right? Let's throw some mayo, throw some ketchup, a little bit of dill, all together, and you've got fry sauce. I'm not a huge fan. I know that is kind of like sacrilegious coming from a Utah, but not my biggest no, nah, it's not my favorite. But we're talking about burgers right now. And Arctic Circle is going to be represented by rallies here. Arctic Circle is going to be a C. That's just what it is. Arctic Circle is going to be a C. It's a big sad, guys. It's a, it's a big sad. Now, the next two is you have Apollo Burger and you have Crown Burger. Both restaurants are home to a regional burger that was, you know, made in Utah. First, like, it's it's a very regional burger for Utah. It's really delicious, and it's the pastrami burger. You get, you know, your third-pound hamburger patty. You get lots of slices of pastrami on there, some cheese. Oh, it's fantastic. Really good. If you haven't had a pastrami burger, get one. Super good. <clears throat> now, it's divisive. People are like, no, Apollo Burger is the best. No, Crown Burger is the best. I couldn't tell you the difference if I ate at both of them. They're both Bs. There we have it. That's Crown Burger. That's Apollo Burger. Maybe in post-production, I'll stick some things out there. But right there, that's the definitive burger list, tier list from your buddy next door. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. We're going to be doing some more food-based content in the future along with our voiceover stuff and weekly updates. So thank you guys so much for sticking around, and you have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.